Now in question 10, we are given the general equation of a circle. So we are told that a circle, it has the equation x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c touches both axes in the first quadrant. Now, if we look at our diagram, we're looking at a circle that touches both the axes. So this is our touching point and this is our touching point and we have the center C. All right. Now remember the center C has coordinates minus G minus F when we are looking at the general equation of a circle X squared plus Y squared plus 2GX plus 2FY plus C is equal to zero. And the radius will actually be, if we look at the diagram here, the radius will be equal. So if we're looking at a center point here of minus G minus F, the radius and the intersection point will actually all be common. So if we're looking at the Y axis, we know that it's going to have an X coordinate of zero. The Y intersection point on the Y axis is going to be the same height as the center. Therefore, we are looking at minus F as our Y point. This point here on the X axis will be the same distance away from the Y axis as our center point. So it's directly underneath the center point, which means that the X coordinate is minus G, Y coordinate is zero. And the radius is going to equal absolute value of minus F or minus G. The reason for that is the center point is directly above. So this, um, this intersection point here, remember if the X axis is a tangent to the circle, if it touches the circle, that means that the perpendicular distance from the point from the center to the line to the X axis is equal to the radius. And therefore the radius will be equal to the X or Y coordinate. So therefore, we're looking at R is equal, and the reason I use absolute value is radius is a length, therefore it can't be negative. So absolute value of minus F or absolute value of minus G. So those are our basic information. So in part A, we're asked to show that C is equal to G squared, which is equal to F squared. All right. First thing we need to do is look at the formula for radius. So we know that the square root of G squared plus F squared minus C is equal to r all right what we can do now because we know the that the radius is equal to the absolute value of f squared which is equal to the absolute value of g, um uh, f the absolute value of minus f which is equal to the absolute value of minus g what we can do here is square all of these and we can say that r squared is equal to f squared which is also equal to g squared all three, three of these are equal so to get rid of the square root sign first we're going to square both sides and we're going to get g squared plus f squared minus c is equal to r squared now we need to um replace the r squared with either f squared or g squared and do the same with we need to pick one variable to work with so we're going to pick the g squared for the moment so g squared is the same as r squared so we have g squared plus f squared is the same as g squared so g squared plus g squared minus c is equal to g squared therefore 2g squared minus c is equal to g squared minus c is equal to bring 2g squared across minus g squared so therefore c is equal to g squared you repeat the process going back to the beginning and replacing the f uh, or replacing the g with an f squared to prove also that c is equal to f squared all right so that's part a one uh then part a part b oh par sorry part a two proving that the center has coordinates minus g minus g. Well, we know that the radius is equal to the absolute value of minus g, which is equal to the absolute value of minus f. Therefore, minus g is equal to minus f. And therefore, our co center coordinates will be minus g minus g. That's fairly straightforward. All right, in part B. T1 and T2 are tangents to our circle. So again, we have our circle 
x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. And looking at our diagram here, so we have our circle that touches our axis. We have tangent 1 and oops, tangent 2. All right, so this is the point of intersection between our tangents. Our center lies on the perpendicular line between them. And we have our x-intercept and our y-intercept. So tangent 1 is the, or tangent 2 is the equation x plus y is equal to b. And tangent 1 is x plus y is equal to 2. So that's the information that we're given. All right, first we are asked to show that b is equal to minus 4g minus 2. So let's think about what we know for definite. We know that the center of the circle is minus g minus f or minus g minus g, either one that we want to choose. In this case, probably might, because we are asked to show that it's equal to minus, minus, minus g minus g in part two of part a, probably is uh, more useful to use that. And if we look at this here, there's no f's in our formula. We also know that the radius is the absolute value of minus g. So using the fact that we have an equation of a line, T1, which is x plus y minus 2 is equal to, or sorry, x plus y minus b is equal to 0. We're dealing with T2. Equation of a line, the radius, and the center point, we can again use the perpendicular distance formula. So absolute value of a times by x1, so that's 1 times by minus g, plus 1 times by minus g minus b over the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared is the perpendicular distance. So that is the, that's equal to the radius. Now, unfortunately, if we let that equal to minus g, we're only looking to solve. So that's actually part three. So we're going to go take a step backwards. Because we know extra information about t tangent 1, we know that it's x plus y equals 2. We, and we also know that the center is on is the midpoint between uh, on the perpendicular line between these two tangents. We can say that the perpendicular distance in each case is equal. So we can say that the perpendicular distance from t from t two to the center, which is this case here, is equal to the perpendicular distance from the center to t one, which is one times by minus g plus one times by minus g minus two over the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. So this is the route that we have to go down with part 2 because if we go about letting that equal to the radius, we're just looking to solve for b, which is part 3. So both sides have the same denominator, so we can get rid of those. We can multiply across by root 2, and that eliminates the denominators. We are left with the absolute value of minus 2g minus b is equal to the absolute value of minus 2g minus 2. So remember, there is a positive and a negative approach here. So we can either have minus 2g minus b is equal to the positive version of it, or minus 2g minus b is equal to minus that, which is 2g plus 2. Solving this here, well, isolating the b, we have minus b, minus 2g becomes plus 2g, which eliminates the 2g's there. So we have minus b is equal to minus 2 and b is equal to 2. That there would give us the um, scenario for t1. And this one here, minus b is equal to minus 2g becomes plus 2g. So 4g plus 2, which means that b is equal to minus 4g minus 2, which is what we're asked to prove in part uh, 1. Uh, by finding the perpendicular distance then, we need to find, we need to show that g is equal to minus 2 plus or minus root 2. So now we're being asked to solve. So remember, b is equal to minus 4g minus 2. So using our perpendicular distance formula again, so our equation for t2, x, minus y, x plus y minus b is equal to 0, our center coordinates of minus g minus g, 
and our radius, which is the absolute value of minus g. We're looking at 1 times my minus g plus 1 times my minus g minus b over the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to the absolute value of minus g. We can now replace the b with minus 4g minus 2. So we're looking at minus, minus 4g minus 2 instead of the b there. And multiplying across by root 2, root 2 by the absolute value of minus g. So tidying up again, we're looking at minus 2g plus 4g, so which is 2g minus minus 2 is plus 2 equals root 2 times by the absolute value of minus g. Because we have absolute value on both sides, the easiest way to get out of this is by squaring both sides. So squaring the left, we get 4g squared plus 8g plus 4, and that is equal to 2g squared, which means we get the equation 2g squared plus 8g plus 4 is equal to 0. Solving this then, using the minus b formula or otherwise, you get g is equal to 2 plus or minus root 2, which is what we're being asked to do in part 2. Then finally, in part 3, we're asked to show that b is equal to 6 plus or minus 4 root 2. We know that b is equal to minus 4g minus 2. If g is 2 plus or minus root 2, multiplying that by minus 4, we have minus 8 plus or minus 4 root 2, uh, minus 2, and minus 2 and minus, uh, sorry, minus 4 times by 2 plus or minus root 2. Up there. Sorry, that should be a minus 2 there in the G. Yeah, pile G's. G should be minus 2 plus or minus root 2, which means we'd have plus 8 here. And 8 minus 2 gives us B is equal to 6 plus or minus 4 root 2. All right, hope that makes a little bit more sense for you. I'll pop up the solutions today and you can have a look through them as well. Thank you.